Entropy is disorder. This is what I was taught. And I'm sure many of you were taught the same thing. Except it doesn't work. Also, what exactly is disorder? Are we sure that disorder is objective, that there is a unique way to define it? You see, to me, entropy is disorder symbolizes those vague explanations we repeat in physics that are not even explanation. They evoke some kind of imagery, some vague intuition, but in the end, they leave you wondering, I don't quite understand. Am I missing something? Yes, a proper explanation. So let's get started. Thermodynamics tells us that entropy is maximized at equilibrium. So if entropy is disorder, then at equilibrium, we are going to have maximal disorder. So here we have some vinegar and we're going to mix it with some water. And here we have some oil and we're going to mix it with some water. We are going to stir in both cases and then wait that the uh, process reaches equilibrium. And at equilibrium, we have that on this side, the max water and vinegar are maximally mixed, while the water and oil separate the oil on the top and water on the bottom. So if entropy is disorder, in both cases, we are maximizing disorder. So we are saying that for water and vinegar, the maximal disorder is when they're mixed, and for water and oil, the maximal disorder is when they're separated. Does not make so much sense. And it really doesn't give you the right intuition. And if your intuition fails in such a simple example, how can you expect to have a good intuition in more complicated examples? So, again, what is disorder? Let's say that we have these three configurations. We have two boxes and we have six balls. In this configuration, all the six balls are in one box. Here we have an even split of three and three. And here we have four balls and two balls. Which configuration is the most ordered? The one where we have all the balls uh, in one box? Or the one where we are split it evenly in both boxes? I mean, I could argue both ways. I, I don't see why one should be more ordered than the other. But you probably are going to say, well, it's not going to be this case, right? In this case, this is, this is more disordered. Well, what if I told you that two of the balls were green? Now, this looks a lot more order than either of the two configuration above. So again, how do you define disorder and how do you find order? It does not make sense to me. Like it's, there is no unique way to do it. And this is the problem. So since entropy is maximized at equilibrium, if entropy is disorder, then it always has to be clear which configuration has more disorder and which has more order. And it doesn't seem to me that that's clear at all. Now, you can also say it for whatever explanation that you're saying that entropy is going to be. You have to solve this problem. And you say, since entropy is maximized at equilibrium, if entropy is x, so whatever x you think is going to be, then it always has to be clear which configuration has more x and why equilibrium should maximize x. If you are not telling me this, then you don't really have a good intuitive explanation of what entropy is in physics, right? So, in information theory, well, entropy is information, and that's very clear because that's by definition, right? And then there are some people that say, since entropy is information in information theory, then obviously, in physics, entropy also has to be information because if we use the same word, we must be meaning the same thing. Right? And again, recall again these two experiments, right? We are mixing water and medicine, and we are mixing water and oil, and entropy is maximized at equilibrium. How are they both maximizing information? Information of what? What is the source and the destination of information? What is the encoding? What are we talking about? Right? It's, it's not at all clear. And again, we go back to these uh, configuration. We have six balls in one side and zero balls on the other and all the other things. Which one has more information? Again, information of what? What are we talking about? And if we have two green balls, how does the situation change? Like all these things have to be clear in your head. Are they clear in your head? They're definitely not clear in my head. And uh, even if you think they're clear in your head, let me give you an example. And then if you can figure out this example, then probably you have a clear idea. And most likely, this example is going to confuse you even more, which is good. Being confused is good. Okay, so suppose I have a box of gas. 
I could heat it up at 100 Celsius and then I would have that the entropy has a particular value, which we indicate here as S100. Or we could also heat it up at 1000 Celsius and then we're going to have a different value for the entropy. Okay, very good. Now, suppose that I flip a coin and if it's head, I prepare the gas at 100 Celsius and if it's tails, I prepare the gas at 1000 Celsius, right? What is the entropy of this preparation? What is it? I have three possible answers for you. One, you're going to say, well, uh, this is thermodynamic entropy and thermodynamic entropy is an extensive variable. And if we were thinking of energy of number of particles uh, uh, that are also extensive variables, I would just think that the energy is the expectation of the energy and the number of particles is the expectation of the number of particles. So I just take the average. So the entropy of this preparation is going to be one half the entropy for the 100 Celsius case plus one half the entropy of of the gas at 1000 okay but you can make another argument what I'm doing when I'm flipping the coin and selecting which gas to give you I'm encoding some information of the coin flip in the choice of gas and you can take this gas use a thermometer and figure out if I got head or tail so we can use this uh, giving you boxes of gas at different temperature as a way to transfer information and in this case, you're transferring one bit of information. So then what should happen, because that's how information entropy combines, I should have the average, the expectation of the information beforehand, plus the new bit, the one bit of entropy that I am uh, creating by making this mixture. Or I have a third hypothesis. So the gas at 100 uh, Celsius correspond to a mixed state over all the possible microstates. So it's a probability distribution and the entropy of that probability distribution corresponds uh, to the thermodynamic entropy, right? And also we're going to have another distribution of microstates for the gas at 1000 Celsius. So we can take the distribution of microstates for one case, the distribution of microstates for the other case and make the statistical average. And then we can take the Shannon entropy, the uh, Gibbs entropy on that state. And that entropy is going to be in between of the average and the average of one bit. So this is going to give you a different answer. So which one is correct? So if you think that entropy is information, can you answer this question? Now, at this point, you might expect a solution. And no, I'm not going to give you a solution because this is not the point of this video. The point of this video is that it's better to say, I don't know, than pretending to have answers with these vague answers that don't actually pan out, that are not always right 100% of the time. Because this is not the only place where in physics you get this vague explanation that if you look and scratch the surface, you say, wait a minute, this does not work in general. For example, we are taught that mass is the resistance of a body to acceleration. So the lower the mass, the easier it is for the body to be accelerated. Okay, then what about the photon? That photon has zero mass. It should be extremely easy to uh, accelerate and instead it's impossible. It always goes at the speed of light. You can't change the speed of a photon. Or we're told that the Lagrangian is kinetic energy minus potential energy. But then, what about the Lagrangian for magnetism, right? What is this term here? There is a kinetic part, there is a velocity, and there is also a potential part. This is neither potential nor kinetic. So that explanation doesn't work. And this is the point. If we want to really to understand the foundations of physics and really understand physics, if you get used to these vague answers that don't quite work and we keep repeating them, then what happens is that, yes, maybe in some cases we get some intuition, but you're essentially preventing yourself to find the, the true answers. You get used to get by with these vague answers and you're never going to spend the time to actually find the true answers, the ones that always work. And this is why I started my project Assumptions of Physics. I want answers that always work. Do I have all the answers? Probably not. That's not the point. The point is to keep looking because if we don't look, we're never going to find anything.
As usual, if you want to know more about our project, you can go and look at our channel, you can visit our website. If you want to contribute to the project, you can donate, link below. And also, if you want to learn more about the cutting edge of the research, we have another channel in which we do live and I talk a little bit about the open problems that we have and uh, try to find people that actually can help me solve. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.